What's up, Dart family? Today I am in a hoodie, just for comedic effect. I don't wear hoodies all that often. <laughs> um, something about blocking the peripheral vision. I, I feel like I, I need that um, to survive, I guess. Uh, so today we are back in the Dart language tour. We are looking at class um, the classes section, uh, specifically on constructors. Um, in the past, I've used the term constructor and uh, initializer interchangeably, but there's a, a bit of a, a nuance in, in, in Dart where you have this constructor definition, you have an initializer list, then you have a constructor body. Um, so don't, don't tangle those words up like I have in the past. A, a constructor generally, if this is the first video you're ever watching on classes and object-oriented programming, it's a way that we get to tell um, our blueprint, which is a class, how to make itself, how to make um, an instance of itself. Now, a lot of times in the Dart docs, you'll hear the word object um, in lowercase o, and that is referring to the instance. Okay, um, yeah, we've got a lot to cover in this, so let's get through it all. I think we'll leave off factory at the end for its own video. All right, declare a constructor by creating a function with the same name as its class plus optionally an additional identifier as described in named constructors, okay? The most common form of a constructor, the generative constructor declares a new instance of a class. It creates a new instance of a class. <clears throat> okay. So I've also made a bunch of notes uh, going through this once before because there's a lot of material and it was all kind of new to me. All right, the, the thing I wanna show you first though, before we even get into this, I mean, we're talking about constructors. Um, there's our main function. Okay, um, if I say bar p equals point like that, that's the same thing as what used to be new point, okay? So I've created a new instance of um, There we go. Okay, so this is an instance of a point. Um, again, that new keyword is um, deprecated, I guess. You know, it's, it, it still works, but um, this kind of looks like a, a sort of, like if you also come from React, a sort of um, component class type uh, initialization. Um, this is, it's really just a function. Um, Okay, so I think this is the thing I wanted to point out is that the class um, point with just like empty and empty body, it gets a default generative constructor. I can I can create something here. It has like a hash code. You know, I can run that and get that. It's a, it's a new piece of memory every time. Okay. Um, right. I think that's all I wanted to show there. Okay, so back to the Dart docs. So where they pick up is, hey, you can actually define one just like this. Um, I think the, the default one, in fact, like can we just define our own default one just like that? Does that still work? Yeah, so it looks like, you know, having this in here is kind of just boilerplate that they abstracted away from the programmer. I kind of just want to see what happens if I declare two. The default constructor is already defined. It's awesome. Cool. Um, so we get a default one. Um, and then my question though, so here's the interesting thing. As soon as you create your own constructor that doesn't match the signature, um, of the default one, which is with no arguments, it immediately gets rid of the default one as well. Okay, so if you were using this previously, now um, you have to use this one. Okay, uh, and the way this works, um, it takes a couple arguments. Uh, looks like you know we have these fields here or these properties x and y. Um, they're initially set to zero, so you would think that you would be able to just do it like this and you would get a default value. Um, but this X is not the same as this X, okay? 
Um, did I make a note about that? Methods can be Pascal cased. Yeah, I think the thing I wanted to show um, here is that this can really just be like double A and double B. They don't have to match uh, because these are kind of just like throwaway variables that we use. Um, this dot X refers to this X, this dot Y refers to this Y. Uh, but on this right hand side, this is what's coming in from calling the constructor itself. And so that's why we have to actually throw in our own uh, values. Okay, so something like that. So now I can say, uh, like in an array, I can say p dot x and p dot y, but you'll notice I don't have access to a p dot a or a p dot b. Okay, that was only for use in this constructor. Okay, and I should show 2, 2. And that's the point that I've made. Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, I want to make sure I don't get ahead of myself. Yeah, show that the param bars can be A and B. That's unconventional. So I, I skipped some things that I wanted to show in, in when I went over this before. And that is that, um, you know, when you have a method, you know, print something. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Printing something, okay. Um, and then I want to say like, so the object P can print something. Oops, oops, nope. Okay, stop doing that. You can use command enter. All right, now it's printing something. That this, this function, or this method here, can also be that. There, there's no, um, there's nothing stopping us from making them uh, capital case or Pascal case. Uh, it's not conventional. So uh, hey, I even get this hover over name non-constant identifiers using lower camel case, uh, and typically you just call that camel case like that as opposed to Pascal case, uh, where the the leading characters capitalized. Okay, but we. Uh, don't access members do 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 yeah this is the warning we got here um, and and methods usually have a return type but the so I was thinking like what is a point like when you when you make one what is it is it a type of point so right <laughs> so I was thinking when I was going through this like why don't constructors if they're just a special type of method um, where the name matches the class name, why not give it a return type? And it tells us constructors can't have a return type. Try removing the return type. Okay. That's like saying, don't ask about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> we don't know why, just don't worry about it. Um, again, I think that's just more boilerplate that's been abstracted away. Okay, so I wanted to show that. Um, constructors are special methods that don't have return types. I wanted to show that as well. And uh, that the type isn't required in the param list. Okay. So just like earlier, I showed the A and B are these throwaway variables that we use. Um, you don't necessarily have to specify that they, they be doubles. Um, and, and this will still work. Okay. Um, but it's, I think, good practice to do that so that people know what to expect. Okay. So that is a, um, this is called a generative constructor. Okay, that's just where you have the class name and it may or may not take some arguments, okay? Okay, and then also, if you're new, the this keyword uh, could be a little confusing. Um, they're saying there's a better way to do this. Uh, this refers to the instance of the class that we're creating. Um, that instance is p. So when I said var p equals 0.2, that that p all of a sudden down in here, if I were to say like, hey, this is going to be p, like guys, I'm going to pass this in. Just trust me. You know, some sort of special notation where I could tell um, tell this this class ahead of time that I'm using this instance variable. 
I could be like, all right, so we're gonna say p dot x and, and p dot y. Okay, um, like this is the, this is the instance, but um, the reason we use this is because I was listening to a um, <clears throat> a language learning thing the other day, and they were talking about pronouns. So like, if I say um, you know Aaron's going to the store later, and Aaron's going to buy some donuts, and Aaron is is then going to check out, and then uh, when Aaron gets home, Aaron's going to you know. Um, like wash his hoodie or whatever. If I keep saying Aaron, um, like we, we just don't use that in speech. Um, you do it at first, but then you use pronouns or what um, could be referred to as a proxy noun because the noun or the pronoun we're gonna use, like he, him, whatever mine happen to be, we're gonna use those in place as a proxy for Aaron. Okay, so similarly, when we have this this uh, variable that's representing the instance of a constructed class, that um, that instance uh, object um, is going to use its pronoun, which is this. Literally, the word this. Um, so this instance versus p p you know, p.x, p.y. Um, so this only references the, 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 the future building, um, <laughs> right? So this is a blueprint. Um, it doesn't know what we're gonna use for our object names, our instance names. Um, so we're just saying like, hey, whatever it happens to be, this.x is gonna be like referring to that instance. Okay, so it's a bit like a pronoun. Okay, so I didn't, I didn't want to glaze over that about this because uh, that is that is important. Uh, this note says use this only when there is a name conflict. Otherwise, Dart style omits this. Okay. Um, I don't have an example for that. I'm sorry. Uh, maybe we'll stumble onto it. Dart style omits this. Oh yeah, I think there's. Similar to how um, people used to use new everywhere, and that's kind of an outdated thing, unnecessary new keyword. Um, likewise, um, I think like in the constructor like this, maybe you have to use this. Um, but if I wanted to print um, x itself, like can I just print x? Do I have access to x here? Right, so I want to print that. I could also say this dot x. Okay, and then what is it telling me? Line eleven. I get two warnings. Um, yeah, let me get rid of that warning. So we'll change that back. Okay. So line eleven is saying don't access members with this unless avoiding shadowing. Well, what is shadowing? Don't use this when not needed to avoid shadowing. This dot value. Oh, okay, okay. So, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go from this bottom example first. Um, this is this is shadowing. If I were to use this this code here, and I had this update method that takes a value, okay, so maybe a call like um, b, you know, for box b dot update, and then I, I give it maybe this means like the the length of the side, so I give it a value of five, okay. Um, so this is kind of the throwaway value um, parameter, and when I pass in that five, this 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 value here. Is the throwaway variable and it's here on the right side as well but if I didn't have this the keyword this <laughs> I would just have value equals value and it doesn't know darts not gonna know which values which right because this value up here is is a property of the box instance 
this value here in the, the params list and on the right side, that's just being used to ultimately set this value, this dot value. Okay, so that's why we have to use that. I think that's what they mean by shadowing. I'm not sure. I'm just thinking that's what that means. Um, but as you can see for this example, um, if you have a, uh, a throwaway variable, remember this just like x and y earlier in the point, this could be a and b. Uh, here it's a new value, right? So it could be throwaway value, throwaway value. Um, and we don't have to use this on, on this example uh, because it's very clear that these are the same thing, okay? Um, right, and and because it's clear, <clears throat> that's why this is a bad example because we don't have to say the stop value here. All right, that's that's what we're doing here. All right, so if I wanted to print uh, x, like whatever that happens to be, and I say print something, I've already set x to two, it's gonna print two now. Okay, like just the number two. Um, and what it's saying is like, hey, you don't have to do that. You can just print x. You don't have to use this.x because it's it's very clear that the only x I'm referring to is this one. Cool, that's something new I discovered that I didn't um, go through in my first um, round on this. All right, still got a lot of material. The pattern of assigning a constructor argument to an instance variable is so common that Dart has syntactic sugar to make this easy. This.x and this.y. Okay, so that's um, syntactic sugar. Just means it's it's a better way to write something. It's kind of like if, if we had to declare the return type of point here. It's like, man, why why do we have to be so, so verbose? Uh, so syntactic sugar. Um, so because the convention. Right. Oops. Where are my arrow keys? Okay. Been using the laptop, and I'm back on the the kinesis advantage too. Okay. Right. So remember how on line 11, this keyword was uh, redundant. We didn't need to use that. Um, but we did need to use it here. See? Because here's the throwaway. Here's the throwaway. Here's the one that refers to our property x. If we didn't have this right here, and we just said y. Okay, let me get rid of this one so we don't see that. Um, and unnecessary new keyword. Well, this is kind of bad because we're not getting we're not getting that error anymore. <laughs> oh, okay. So this is kind of unintended. Um, mm -hmm. So even though I've said 0.22, all right, the two came in here, the two came in here. I'm expecting that two to get assigned to something. But maybe even, even passing this in, maybe these um, have higher precedence than the arguments I passed in because I'm printing zero zero. So let me make sure that's not just some kind of like weird fluke and we get zero one this time, right? Okay. So what I was actually expecting is some sort of uh, warning similar to what we had earlier um, where it, it would say, hey, you're actually shadowing here so you need to put a this, or hey, did you mean this? Um, so yeah, so don't shadow because you can obviously make that mistake where even though you're creating a point with different values, something unintended came out. Um, okay, so right, we are back at the syntactic sugar. We wanna ref, uh, refactor this, this, uh, this constructor. Um, let's look at this warning. It says use initializing formals when possible. That, that sounds like very formal speak. Use initializing formals. Um, okay, uh, terse. That means it's shorter and easier to understand. So this is bad. 
um, using this.x equals this and, and specifically like in a constructor. Okay, hey look, it's our example, kind of. Um, so we can just say this.x and this.y in the argument list and it's, it's assumed, it's inferred that we are going to assign x and y the value. Okay. And you can do it with named parameters too. Okay, and here all they're showing at the bottom is that there is no, um, there's no shadowing here, so it's fine to use this dot is enabled. It says the rule will not generate a lint for named parameters unless the parameter name and the field name are the same. Okay, so they have to shadow. Um, the reason for this is that resolving such a lint would require either renaming the field or renaming the parameter, and both of those actions would potentially be a breaking change. Huh. Okay, very cool. <clears throat> okay, so instead of double Y, we can just say this dot X, this dot Y. We kind of lose some documentation in the sense that we don't know when we're creating it that it'll take a double. Um, I might think it just takes an integer and maybe I'm expecting that or something. Um, Fortunately for us that Dart kind of handles that, but um, yeah, we kind of lose, do we lose it? Or can we say double this.x and double this.y? Don't type annotate initializing formals. Man, I'm learning so much. Okay, if a constructor parameter is using this.x to initialize a field, then the type of the parameter is understood to be the same type as the field. Okay. So just by using this.x and this.y, otherwise it's redundant. Okay, so we should be able to look at our code and say, hey, you've already declared x as a double here. Um, you don't you don't need to declare it again in this in this syntactic sugar um, constructor. Okay. Okay. Right. Um, in the interest of time, I don't. So Ruby's uh, way of initializing attributes, um, it, it's kind of similar to this, where, except, so Ruby is all about syntactic sugar, uh, it seems like, and, and Ruby on Rails. But for Dart, um, yeah, so, so in Ruby, you actually do in your initializer, you have to assign your, your throwaway variable to the instance variable itself. We actually don't get this kind of syntactic sugar in Ruby. Okay, so that's all I wanted to say about that, is that um, it's kind of nice to see some syntactic sugar in Dart. Okay, default constructors. Um, if you don't declare a constructor, a default constructor is provided for you. The default constructor has no arguments and invokes the no argument constructor in the superclass. Um, so we, we saw this already. Right. Okay. Um, I was thinking about like, it invokes the no argument constructor in the superclass. So what if I didn't have this here and then I inherited something like uh, coordinate. Okay, I don't even have to do that. Come on. So coordinate is going to extend point, right? Um, so now, <clears throat> now we're not getting yeah, that's, that's nothing now. So now point has a default constructor, which takes no arguments. Coordinate should as well. Isn't that what it said? It said that um, it invokes the no argument constructor in the super class. So this is the super class. Now if I give point something like this, okay, um, 
I can I can I can still create a coordinate. All right, and that's all. That that's that's fine. Let's see, just to feel good about it. Okay, so we're still printing X, whatever. What I want to show here, though, um, is that if we have a constructor body like so, and I say print foo. Okay, it doesn't. Okay. Now, if I call coordinate like this, I think what that's going to do. Well, so print's going to fit. Point's going to print foo, but so is coordinate, and and basically I'm showing that um, it invokes the no argument constructor in the superclass. So coordinate we would we would expect um, can I do this? Maybe let's see what happens. So I'm I'm trying to print like when I when I new up uh, the class. Is it going to have access to an instance of the thing, right? So that way we can clearly see who kind of the caller is. Okay. Okay, so there's our new point. It's an instance of instance of point. I guess I could have just said this. <laughs> okay, that's the interpolated bit. And then I knew it up again, but that time it's an instance of coordinate. Okay. And then I'm printing it, obviously, right there. Yeah, so these first two lines, um, this clearly demonstrates that coordinate extended point. So it inherited this thing here. It kind of got its own little copy and paste for free, where it matched. It was the exact same thing, right? So in fact, it's, it's going to print the same thing if I run it again. Like, um, actually, it doesn't. Oh, wow. Okay, let me clearly delineate something. <laughs> so, not only did point say, hey, instance of point, but the coordinate, it printed one here. Let me just get rid of this so we can see what order it's going in order let's say order two let's say this is order one come on. right okay so now it should say order one instance of point now so this is interesting so when i called a new coordinate it didn't print this one first it first went to the super class so this is a little bit different from ruby in the sense that I, I'm usually expecting, I think, to call the child first and then call super. But what happens here is the parent gets called first, so maybe there's some setup or something, uh, and then finally the the child prints as well. Okay. Cool. All right, that's all I wanted to show about uh, default constructors. Now the other thing is that constructors aren't inherited. Um, even though we do call the super class, it's not really inherited, right? Um, subclasses don't inherit constructors from their super class. A subclass that declares no constructors has only the default, and it invokes the one in the super class. Okay. Um, let me see in my notes, is there anything I was missing? Default constructor isn't the parents, right? Well, it kind of is at that point, so maybe, I don't know what I meant there, disregard that. Coordinate from point, uh, must have the same signature. Okay, that's fine, I think I showed that. Initialize a list, redirecting constructor, ah, redirecting. Okay, so I think we're good to go on. So we have named constructors next. Um, use a named constructor to implement multiple constructors for a class or to provide extra clarity. Okay, so our point is getting bigger. Here we go, no more coordinate, we just have a new point. So outside we have these top level constants, x origin, y origin. We have our class point. Inside it has its own x and y. It has a, um, a generative, 
constructor, that's what they called it, a generative constructor, this.x, this.y. Okay, so we've seen this, but now it has this thing called a named constructor. Um, so we are saying uh, that uh, there's this one called origin like this. Um, okay, and then there's this colon thing, right? Um, and, and all this is, this is what's called an initializer list and we'll get to this in a second. Um, right, so let's just, let's go through this real quick. Um, we've got something like that. I can make a point, two and two. Um, and then I can also do, let's say, PO for point origin. I can say point dot origin. Okay, it suggests it for me. Now, it doesn't take any, any arguments, does it? No. So I'm going to print, let's say, um, p.x and p.y. So that was two and two. Uh, and now I'm going to print uh, po.x. Okay, and PO dot y. So our point P has two and two. It did this constructor um, because it matches the signature. The signature is what it looks like. Okay, it looks like it matches that one, right? Uh, the named constructor, it didn't take any any values, but because x origin and y origin are these top level constants, um, it can see those, and so then it sets it here. And notice we didn't say this.x, um, we didn't say this.y. And that's only because it's on the right side of this initializer thing, okay? So this colon kind of separates into the left and the right. Um, don't access members with this unless avoiding shadowing, yeah. Okay. Right, okay, yeah, and that's why. Uh, so if I print this, I should get two two and zero zero. Um, and if I wanted to you know, make that 9 and 11 or something, just to show that what it's going to print here is 9 and 11. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, so that's a named constructor. That's a way to, to change things up. Um, in Dart, uh, you will often have a material app. Okay. Um, so this is my class material app here. Um, Here's the constructor. It has this keyword const in front of it, but this is a this is the constructor, or one of them. Okay, it's pretty big. Uh, but there's also this constructor. This is a named constructor. Um, if you've ever seen Flutter Folio, they actually use this dot router version. Uh, last time I checked, um, and it has some different things that you have to use in here, like the router delegate that you don't have up here in. Um, in this regular material app, okay? So that's kind of cool. Okay, so there's a <clears throat> that's an example of a real named constructor. Okay, so it says remember that constructors are not inherited, which means that a superclass is named constructor is not inherited by a subclass. If you want a subclass to be created with a named constructor defined in this superclass, you must implement that constructor in the subclass. That's a lot of language. Um, <laughs> yeah, so what that means is <clears throat> if I have a coordinate again, and let's say it extends point, if I want to use coordinate.origin, I have to say coordinate.origin, like so. And I think it has to actually match the whole signature. And it doesn't. Oh, a zero argument constructor. Mm, I'm using a name constructor. X isn't in the enclosing class, so I'd have to like, I guess, repeat some of these things. Oops. And now I'm getting into dangerous territory, making stuff up on the fly. The superclass point doesn't have a zero argument constructor. Okay, this is all right. This is this is a good error message to see. So the error message is telling me, hey, the superclass point, the thing you're inheriting from, it doesn't have a zero argument constructor. 
uh, try declaring one or explicitly invoking a different constructor and point. What it really means is, hey, um, I think this is what it means. <laughs> nope. All right, I am definitely in dangerous territory. Um, hmm. Doesn't have a zero. Yeah. So if you want to, I think this is what I wrote earlier, where, um, yeah, it gets kind of kind of dangerous. Um, right. So this was saying constructors aren't inherited. The superclass's name constructor is not inherited. Okay, the superclass's named constructor here is not inherited. Thank you. If you want a subclass to be created with a name constructor defined in the superclass, you must implement that constructor in the subclass. Well, it looks like I've implemented this constructor in the subclass. Okay, that's what it looks like to me. Maybe we should just do point? No? Yeah, okay, this is a good thing to know. So I can't explicitly call the parent constructor here. Uh, the superclass point doesn't have, oh no, sorry. The name of a constructor must match the name of the enclosing class. Okay, so that needs to be coordinate. <clears throat> Okay, so now I'm getting a different one on line 20. Class point doesn't have an unnamed constructor. Okay, yep, I'm lost. Um, so this is like, this is exactly why I started doing these annotated Dart documents because for a novice coming in here, like, are you really going to take away that much? Um, if someone like myself, like I, yeah, I didn't come from a C or Java background, but coming from Ruby, having practiced it for four years and been deep in code and um, really catalyzed my learning along the way. <laughs> if I'm having trouble understanding the, these document, this documentation and let's just like playing around in DartPad, um, I would like to watch somebody else's video showing me exactly um, what this means, okay? And, and why I can't do exactly what I think it's saying. If you want a subclass to be created with a named constructor, you know, defined in the superclass, you must implement that constructor in the subclass. I feel like I've done that, um, but it's just not letting us go. Okay, so um, let's move on. And we'll have a donut for that. Quick donut break. Uh, it's hard. Got to get my energy back up. Okay. So invoking a non-default superclass constructor, non-default, meaning like the named one, uh, or, or at least one that's defined. By default, a constructor in a subclass calls the superclasses unnamed, no argument constructor. The superclasses like any constructor, any subclass constructor, like even my named one, calls the superclasses unnamed. So it has to have one maybe? Is that the point? Sorry, I am back on this trail. Hmm, the default constructor is already defined now. 
Mm-hmm. With points. What? <laughs> oh man, something else is definitely wrong with my code. Look at this. We expected an identifier and a semicolon after this const. I am so confused by this. This is unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, that's totally weird. Totally weird. Hmm. So strange. <sighs> okay. So this next part, I think we saw this already, where we saw the super class constructor get called and then the class that we were calling from, uh, the, the subclass. We're calling that the main class here, the, the one you're calling it from. Um, and we haven't done initializer list yet. If the superclass doesn't have an unnamed no argument constructor, <clears throat> then you must manually call one of the constructors in the superclass. Specify the superclass constructor after a colon, the superclass constructor just before the constructor body. Huh. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe we need to do that. No. In the following example, the constructor for the employee class calls the named constructor for its super class. Okay, so we've got ourselves a person. It has a named constructor. And then employee extends person. Okay, so it also does something similar. And then, okay, super, super. Well, this is just super, guys. Um, holy moly. Look at that. Don't overwrite fields. Come on, Aaron. Okay. I think we finally figured it out. <laughs> All right, this is great. So we're saying do coordinate.origin because it has to match this, I believe. Okay. Um, but in order to in order to call point.origin, right? So let's give this like eight and uh, six. Okay. So now if I call a new coordinate, let me just get rid of this. I'm gonna say var c equals coordinate.origin. And, and just be done with that. And now I'm just going to print um, c.x and c, c.y. So I'm expecting 8 and 6. Okay. So I had to match the signature by calling the name constructor. I had to give it the same name, didn't I? Um, origin. If I just said start, does it have to be the same name? It doesn't. Okay. So did it say that earlier? If you want the subclass to be created with a name constructor defined in the superclass, you must implement that constructor in the subclass. But it doesn't have to have the same name. I use start here. And it did the same thing as origin, so it didn't have to match it on that level of specificity. But this this does have to do it because super is going to go up to point and find origin, okay? And it matches the signature uh, in the sense that it doesn't take any arguments. 
Okay, cool. That was very challenging. Okay, but now we know, and that's how we get experience, is we struggle. Okay? Because the arguments to the superclass constructor are evaluated before invoking the constructor, an argument can be an expression such as a function call. Mm -hmm. Arguments to the superclass are evaluated before invoking the constructor. Okay. Yeah, so if we have this subclass and we need to invoke, hey, look at that. So you can do a default unnamed. So we could have just called this coordinate. And then here, just doing that is going to get the one from point on origin. Good, okay, thought it froze. Right, um, so that is, yeah, if we needed, if, if point for some reason was kind of an quote unquote abstract class um, or whatever, and it wasn't really meant to be used directly, only indirectly through its children, but we defined the constructor in the superclass, um, we may need to pass it some data, okay? So this is saying fetch default data gets it from a file, gets it from you know some other website on the server somewhere, some API call maybe. Um, <clears throat> and then we um, we call the, the supers class, like from JSON. So this is kind of a real example. Okay, warning, arguments to the super class constructor don't have access to this. For example, arguments can call static methods, but not instance methods. Okay, I don't think I have a note about that. Mm -mm. Okay, so where are we? We have initializer list, and then we have redirecting, and then constant. Um, yeah, well, let's just keep going. Besides invoking a superclass constructor, you can also initialize instance variables before the constructor body runs. Separate initializers with commas. Okay, so these are kind of like instructions that that you can um, you can do you can give to your program before you get to the quote unquote constructor body. Okay, so here's the signature. You have a colon. Here's your initializer list, and then here's your constructor body. So the the entire signature of a constructor is is this sort of like method signature, okay? Where it's this, this named method um, with arguments and all that jazz. An initializer list <clears throat> to the right side of a colon, more instructions, and then the constructor body. Now you could conceivably put, um, I guess you could put these in the constructor body. So the question I have at this point reading the docs is like, when do you use initializer list and when do you use the constructor body? What are the pros and cons? Okay. Right, the right side, hand side of the initializer doesn't have access to this. Um, we saw that it did, but you didn't want to um, have shadowing. Okay, uh, later I'm actually going to show you a, a, um, a spot <clears throat> where you can use this on the right side. So take this with a grain of salt. Okay, during development you can validate inputs by using a cert in the initializer list. So a lot of times you'll see uh, code like this. Now let's go back to our material app example. Okay, let's look at its constructor. Okay, so here's all the um, all the arguments that it's taking. Okay, here's that colon, and then here's a bunch of assert statements. Okay, if if the code you write doesn't satisfy any of this stuff, um, your program will fail. Okay, and then you have to go fix that. 
So it's this is making us a, a better developer. And so we thank the people who wrote this for putting these asserts there. Okay, um, so those are asserts, these are assignments, and then it's saying, hey, go, go to the parent class, whoever I'm inheriting from. In this case, it is uh, object. Okay, I think, no, stateful widget, material app extends stateful widget. Okay, and, and, and so that works in development, it's just fine. And in production code, we skip the assert statements. Um, okay. Yeah, so check this out. So. Initialize your lists are handy when setting up final fields. The following example initializes three final fields in an initialize your list. So here's our three final fields, x, y, and distance from origin. Here is our constructor. We give it an x and a y. It assigns x and y, and also the distance from origin by calculating the square root, <clears throat> because we've imported the math library. So p represents this point then we can say distance from origin, and it's just going to get us that value. Um, it's not calculating it at the time. This isn't a um, this isn't a function call, or sorry, this isn't a method. This is this is a property that was set whenever we created it. Um, there are a couple errors. Use initializing formals when possible. Okay, can I save this right here? Yeah, it says avoid unless shadowing. Because I feel like this is shadowing, right? <laughs> Let's run it and see if it works. Okay, it still works. So when they said the right-hand side of an initializer doesn't have access to this, um, I, don't, I don't think that's entirely accurate. And in fact, I, I would use it here because of shadowing. Um, what is initializing formals? We did this one earlier, right? So it's... So in this, could you say this dot x? <clears throat> and this dot y and this should just get rid of these and have the one right so maybe this is a better this is a better way to do it yeah okay so that, that was good I'm glad we discovered that um, yeah otherwise I would want to use the this keyword on the right side Okay, so that's cool. So that's setting it, x and y, and then we're still able to use it. But on this side, I don't think we use this.x like that, this.x, this.y. Oops. See, in fact, this is what it's referring to. The right-hand side of an initializer doesn't have access to this. Um, right here it does, okay? It's not perfect, but it, it does have access to it. Where it doesn't have access to this is like when we're using it over here. Okay. So get a feel for when you can use it and when you can't. Um, make your code look clean and concise. That's, that's kind of the takeaway here, I think. Okay. We've got uh, two more, and then we're going to stop before factories. All right, redirecting constructors. Sometimes a constructor's only purpose is to redirect to another constructor in the same class. A re redirecting constructor's body is empty. With the constructor call using this instead of the class name appearing after a colon. Right. So this is that example where we're using the this keyword on the right side 
of the initializer. So let's let's plug this into point. Get rid of that. Plug this in in place of point. Okay, we don't need these anymore. Um, Okay, let's clean this up now. Hmm. All right, so we have these two properties, x and y. Uh, they don't have an initial value. Um, here's our constructor. Uh, you know, it's not a named constructor. It just takes x and y, so something like two and two. We could do something like that. Um, but then we could also do, let's say, a long axis. So P2, or is this is P1? All right, so P1.x and P1.y is going to be 2, 2, because I've defined it like that. P2 is just going to be point along axis. It takes a single value. Let's give it 7. Okay. Um, it's a double. We can put it in an integer. We could say 7.0, doesn't matter. <clears throat> And what this is going to go hit is this point here, right? So this actually represents point. Now it doesn't let us use point again. Um, we have to use the pronoun this. Okay, it's going to pass in seven. So if we instead, or in addition to, print p2x and p2y, we're going to get uh, x is equal to 7 and then the default value here because it's a long axis is going to be 0 all right so we're gonna get 2 2 and 7 0 here we go there it is 2 2 7 0 all right this is a redirecting um, thing and I wonder if you did like something like that See if you would just comma separate Stuff like that. Okay, so on the right side, we can call, we can do some assignments, right? Like this dot x, or x equals x, x equals y. We saw that a second ago. We saw with this square root uh, function. Um, you can call super on the right side for, call the, the uh, superclass or the parents constructor. Um, but then also you can refer to a different constructor in this class itself. So that's called redirecting, redirecting constructor. Okay, finally, we have constant constructors or constant constructors. If your class produces objects that never change, you can make these objects compile time constants. Um, but a note here, constant constructors don't always create constants. So that's kind of tricky, so beware. Uh, to do this, define a const constructor and make sure that all instance variables are final. Okay. Let's create an immutable point and take a look at this. Let's see if we're going to do some. Well, I actually don't know if we're going to be doing that. Let me just get rid of this. Okay, so we have this class, immutable point. It has so static means it's a class variable or a class method. In this case, it is a class variable called origin uh, of type immutable point. It's a constant. Um, and what it's doing is, I think it's just calling this constructor, right? So here's our const constructor, this.x and this.y. This is actually calling that constructor, okay? Um, right, and there's our, our fields. So what we can do is we can print to the console immutable point dot origin. Okay, so this is a class variable. It didn't come off of an instance of immutable point. It came off the instance itself, um, and it refers to this this thing over here. Um, so like I could say dot x, right? And I'm going to get zero. 
because that's, that's that one. Maybe, there it goes. Okay. Um, right. Okay, that is a const constructor. Uh, and we also saw that uh, with like the material app. Um, here's our const constructor. Um, right, like widgets and state, things are changing, but um, I think all these like these values are gonna be final fields, if that's the case, right? Yeah, so you have all these final fields. All right. So that is um, the first part of constructors and classes. Um, I feel like I skipped over this one a little bit. I mean, it's like maybe this took away from that. Let me do one more thing. Okay. We're not going to have that. Um, let's say, yeah, we're not going to have that either. Like you can have an immutable point. And give it some values two five, whatever, um, and then we can print ip. Dot x and ip. Dot y. Okay, and get two five. I think the reason we didn't go down this route in the first place is because like it doesn't, like we did all this before, right? Like, what's the difference if it's const or not, right? Um, we didn't get any type of warning that said, hey, maybe use a const. Um, I think, in general, the more you can use const in your program, the better for more for better performance. Um, but if we didn't have that final field, it says you can't uh, define a const constructor for a class with non-final fields, make them final or remove the keyword const from the constructor. Um, only static fields can be declared as const, okay. Uh, but what if I said const double x equals zero and const double y equals zero. Can I do that? No, only static. It's given a value when it was declared, so it can't be set to a new value. Ah. Okay. I think that makes sense now. <laughs> you can't declare it and then give it a new value. Okay. Because this, remember, this is uh, syntactic sugar for assignment. Um, and that is why to have static okay but again now we can't use um, this because see X must be initialized right hey the world is right again except if you're using static const why would you reassign it okay so basically I, I tried a lot of different ways to <clears throat> get this to work another way, or at least to show me all the error messages that, like, hey, um, <laughs> you have to use final, you big dummy. That's that's really the only only way about it. Um, yeah, no, 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 you go away. Okay. Oh, here, here's an interesting thing. If you do assignment, you'll get this warning. X is final was given a value when it was declared, so it can't be set to a new value. Okay. What if I got rid of that? I would still have that. Can you use late final with a const? I guess the last thing I want to see. No, you can't. Okay. So this is this is kind of cool if you need to use <coughs> const like all your fields have to be final and I think that's what it said 
all instance variables are final. There you go. All right, we'll see you next time for factory constructors.